Hey y'all, come on in here. Happy Monday. I know it's a little late, you know what I'm saying? But it's still more money Monday. And I'm like, oh no, we're not gonna miss a Monday. Okay, if I'm not, if I'm not sick and thank goodness I am feeling better, then we're not gonna miss a Monday, okay? So I need you to pick up the phone because opportunity is calling. And a lot of y'all been ignoring opportunities calls since January. But I need you to pick up the phone. Comment, pick up the phone in the chat, okay? Comment, pick up the phone in the chat. Let me pin this comment, child. Yes, I'm so excited for you to be in the challenge. Pick up the phone. So, you know, I was reflecting on all day what message, you know, is really, do I feel called to today? And a few things came all at once. And right before I was going to go on this live, the message came that the O in October is for opportunity. And it came really quick as well that a lot of us have been ignoring our opportunities because we're not seeing it packaged up in the way that we expect. Y'all have been ignoring opportunities, phone calls. Opportunities been calling you. Opportunities been blowing up your phone. Opportunities been trying to take you out, but you have been ignoring the call because it didn't look the way you thought it was supposed to look. It didn't have the razzle dazzle that you thought it was supposed to have. It didn't look wrapped up in a bow the way you thought God was going to bring opportunity to your door. So let's talk about what opportunity looks like. A lot of the time and most of the time, opportunity does not look familiar. Opportunity does not look cute or handsome or fine or sexy or fun. Opportunity does not look like something you would have dreamed of Opportunity is not supposed to be that. You see, God presents us with opportunity to really determine everything you keep praying to me for, do you really want it? I wanna tell you guys a story that was once told to me. And this is when I first started my journey in Islam. There is a man, there was a man that was stranded. Um, you know, his boat was sinking, he stranded in the water. And so, you know, he's saying, I'm, I'm just going to pray to God to help me. I'm going to pray to God to help me. I'm going to pray to God to help me. So he's praying to God. He's praying to God. He's praying to God. The first, uh, you know, this group of people come by and they have a little boat, nothing, nothing big, nothing crazy. And they're like, hey, we're here to help you. We see that you're stranded. And he looked at them in the boat and he was like, oh, no, that's OK. I'm waiting for God to help me. I'm waiting for God to show up. And they said, okay, and they left. So he's staying, he's the, the boat, you know, the boat's sinking and sinking. He's waiting, he's waiting. He said, I'm just praying to God. I'm praying to God to help me. Somebody else comes by. This, you know, kind of older man, you know, doesn't really look like he has it all together, paddles his way up to him and says, hey, it looks like you need help. You can get in my boat. I'll take you back to shore. He says, no, mm, I'm waiting for God to help me. That's okay. Thanks anyway, you know, fine. So he's just waiting. He's having his faith in God. He said, God, I know you're going to come through. I know you're on your way to help me. I know it. I just know it. I know it. I know it. Third boat comes by. I believe it's, you know, full of women. They're out doing, I don't know what they're doing, but they say, hey, you know, it looks like you're about to drown. We can help you come and get in the boat and we can get back to shore. He says, mm, no, that's okay. I'm waiting for God to help me. The man dies. The boat sinks. The man dies. He goes up to heaven and he says, well, God, where are you at? <laughs> he says, well, God, where are you? Because I was praying for you to help me, but you never came. And he said, no, I came in a package that you judged. 
The first boat that came, I sent it. The second boat that came, I sent it. The third boat that came, I sent it. But because you expected it to look like something else or me coming down from the sky to pull you out of the boat and put you back on shore, that is why you ignored the opportunities I gave you to save your life. I just want us to sit with that for a moment. Opportunities are not going to come packaged up the way that we think they're supposed to come. You might be judging an opportunity that God has specifically sent to save your life, to improve your life, to give you all that you are asking for. But because it doesn't look like God showing up to your door, sign sealed delivered, you're like, mm, no, that's not it, right? Sometimes opportunity looks like work. Sometimes opportunity looks like staying up until 3 a.m. Sometimes opportunity looks like a random post that you see to go to a networking event because at that networking event, you're going to meet someone that God has you aligned to meet with. That's opportunity. But if you don't go to that networking event because it appears like it's too much, well, I don't know. Uh, how can you ever get what is promised to you if you are waiting for opportunity to look a certain way? Are y'all picking up what I'm putting down? I need you to be open to opportunity. I want you to comment open in the chat. Comment the word open in the chat because we have to be open to opportunity. Ever since I heard that story, and this was maybe when I was 20 years old, it stuck with me. And I always go back to it. Every time I'm judging either someone or something or a situation that is happening in my life, I have to look and ask myself and say, hmm, instead of me thinking that this is just something else, could this actually be opportunity wrapped up as an answered prayer? Could this be what I've been asking God for showing up in a way that I don't expect? And you know what, y'all? And especially ladies. Now, we're, gonna not, we're not going to talk too much about dating on here because I talk about that on my other page, Ellie Talks Love. But I want, us to really, I want you to see how this really relates to the relationships in your life as well. Sometimes we are praying to God for a companion. We are praying to God for either the woman of, of our life or the man of our life, right? We're praying to God for a partner. And God says, okay. And so God is sending us opportunities either to go and meet that person or sending us that person. But because they don't look like they're wrapped up in six figures or because they don't look like they're wrapped up in a G-Wagon or because they don't look like they're wrapped up the way somebody's supposed to be wrapped up on social media, according to what social media says, we miss our opportunity. I want us to really pay attention to this. We've got to be paying attention and thinking about how many opportunities are we potentially missing because we are judging it by the package it is coming in. The woman of your life or the man of your life might be in a season where she's not wrapped up in a Louis Vuitton bag and a six-figure uh, salary. Does that mean she's not going there? Does that mean he's not going there? Because what is sent by God will not always be in its final finished product. Because one thing you have to ask yourself is, am I in my final finished product? If you are currently not in your final finished product at the most refined level and state you could ever be, why is God going to send one of his own children to you in their final finished product if you cannot meet them where they're at. So if you still have work to do, God is going to send you someone who also still has work to do so you all can do that work together. And I want you to think about this as it relates to your business as well. You're asking for a seven-figure business, a six-figure business, more success, real estate, and et cetera. Hmm. 
The opportunities that God is sending you is going to match the level of your stewardship right now in this season. So you're waiting for God to send you an opportunity where you start making $15,000 a month and you start having, you know, 100,000 followers on Instagram. But the opportunity he's going to send you is going to match your current level of stewardship now. How are you stewarding the $1,500 you have? How are you stewarding the 1,500 followers you have? Before we want 500,000 followers, how are you taking care of the 500? So sometimes your opportunity is going to come packaged up looking like you need to create more content, you need to do more work, you need to focus more on what you have right now before God can give you what you're asking for. Hmm. Hmm. Are y'all picking up what I'm putting down right now? Listen, I just be sitting here before I get on live and I be asking God, God, what is the message today? And I'm telling y'all right before I came on here, God told me to say opportunity is calling. Tell these people to pick up the phone. Because we, we, you cannot, you know what I'm saying? We have 89 more days left in this year. I don't want us spending more time ignoring the phone call of opportunity simply because it doesn't look the way we think it's supposed to look. You know, another favorite story that I have that I tell myself all the time, and if you've been following me for a while, you've probably heard me say this. We always are praying to God for a cake. We want the most delicious cake, right? This is a metaphor for our life. We wanna have amazing things in life, you know, the car, the house, the wealth, the looks, the, the relationship, we want it all, right? It's natural. We're praying to God for the cake, but let me tell you something. God is not going to go and put the cake at your front door. What God is going to do is God is going to send you the flour, God is going to send you the eggs. God is going to send you the butter. God is going to send you the sugar. God is going to send you the buttercream. God is going to send you the ingredients that you need. And these are all going to be in the shape and form of opportunity so that you take those ingredients and you make your cake. Because this is our relationship with God, right? God has put us here to achieve and fulfill a very specific destiny and purpose. But guess what God also gave us? That is choice. So we know that we're here to do an assignment, but you know what God can't do? He cannot pull us by the top of our head and force us every day to go do the assignment. He said, you know, I'm going to present you with the opportunities, I'm gonna present you with the jobs, I'm gonna present you with the lessons, I'm gonna give you your intuition, I'm gonna let you know when something isn't adding up, I'm gonna show you the signs, but ultimately, I'm going to let you make the choice of if you are going to make the cake with what I have given you or not. Are you just going to keep asking me for a completed cake or are you going to look at the opportunities I've already presented to you and start to make the cake with what you have. I want y'all to comment, make the cake in the chat. Comment, make the cake. Because one thing that I have learned in going from being broke on EBT, while I was breastfeeding my children in 2020, doing Postmates with my kids in the back, no job, my mom helped me to get a car, living at my mom's house at the time. This is only three years ago. One thing I've learned from going from that Ellie to this Ellie is that all the tools I needed to make the cake that I currently have right now, I had them back then. I didn't go get an extra certification to start the business that I have now. I didn't go get an extra degree. I didn't pay anyone 50 or 70 or $100,000 to give me something that I didn't already have. I took a $1,200 stimulus check and the knowledge I had from my nine to five that laid me off and started the business. 
and all the other ingredients and opportunities I needed along the way, God brought them to me to make me who I am right now. So I want you to recognize as well the difference between and the distance between where you are right now and where you want to be is not that far. It's not requiring you to become an entire different person. What it's requiring you is for you to have a completely different belief system. You don't need to go out and get your body done. You don't need to go out and get your teeth done. You don't need to go out and get lipo. You don't need to go out and get a different car. You don't need to go out and have a fancy background. You don't need to have a new apartment to get to the version of you that you want to be at. What you need to do is believe that God has already equipped you with a very certain set of skills and experience and ingredients to help you get to that next level. You just simply need to get in the kitchen. You just need to get in the kitchen and start whipping it up. Because you know what happens, right? Someone has told us that we weren't enough. Someone in our life, someone in our journey has given us this false belief that somehow we were not enough in the way that we currently are. And this is why we're spending this extra time. This is why you're spending your precious time looking for external validation when God has already validated you. God keeps sending you opportunities. Opportunity keeps calling your phone because God already knows you have the tools and ingredients and equipment to do what you keep praying to me for. But because some dusty four years ago or six months ago told you you weren't good enough, you let the opinions of that dusty outweigh the opinion of me, your God. And God is like, so when did the Dusties get all this power? Because how are you going to let somebody who didn't create you, who doesn't have the power to hear your prayers, who can't save you, make you somehow think that you're not qualified? I'm just... God is like, okay, because, you know, I'm just trying to figure it out. And yes, this goes for the men too. Y'all have let some dusty woman make you think that you're not good enough, which is why you haven't achieved the goals that you set out. Ladies, y'all have let some dusty man make you feel like you're not good enough and God cannot get through to you. I really want y'all to understand this. I did not have any handout to start my business. I started it in the corner of my mother's living room off a thought and a prayer and a stimulus check. I didn't know how to do any makeup. I didn't have money to be getting my hair done. I used to do my own hair. I wasn't even wearing lashes at the time. I just barely started knowing how to do my own lashes. So really what I want you to understand is the tools that you need to change your life are already within you. Once you get in that kitchen and you start utilizing the ingredients God has given to you, truly utilizing them and being aware and open to opportunities, even if they don't look the way that you think they're supposed to look, that is when you are going to start seeing transformation in your life. Some of these ingredients in your life look like your previous job experience. Your ingredients look like opportunities that show up on your phone or in your email, certain invitations, certain denials. Let me tell you guys something. Sometimes opportunity and the ingredients you need come in the form of a denial. I applied to 55 jobs between January 2020 and June of 2020 when I finally decided, let me try to start this business. 55 jobs and I was denied to all of them. I'm over here like, well, God, what's up? Because, you know, I don't want to be on EBT forever. So what are we doing? But sometimes the opportunity and the ingredient is going to come in the form of a no. But a lot of us, right, a lot of y'all are stopping at the no. 
The no comes and you're like, dang, I guess it wasn't meant to be. And meanwhile, God is like, no, it's meant to be, but that is not your door. Sometimes the opportunity is a no so that you can shift and look the other way and try something else. How else can God steer you besides sending no's and denials your way? Like I said, he can't pull us by the top of our head and drag us throughout life. That's not how this works. But what he can do is make sure that certain doors are closed and certain doors are open. So sometimes the opportunity is packaged up like a denial. Does that mean you're actually being denied your destiny? No. But what God is telling you is, sweetie, it's not over there. It's over there. It's not here, it's there. Sometimes ingredients are going to look like people you didn't expect to start building a friendship or relationship with. Sometimes ingredients are going to look like someone that you just randomly meet at the grocery store who tells you, hey, I really like your makeup or I really like your hair. If you do hair like that, please let me know. If there's anything, if you know anyone who can help me with this, please let me know. I wanna just ask y'all something. Have you ever had a moment where a random person that you don't know literally validated a thought or idea that you had? So for example, Maybe you're at the grocery store, you're at the mall, whatever, and someone random comes up, gives you a compliment or talks to you about something, and they tell you, yeah, you know what? You know, you seem like a person that could really do something like this. I really like that on you. You know, you're great. You could do this, right? They come up and they just speak to something so specific. I want you to comment yes or no in the chat if that's ever happened to you. Just, it's just almost like weird. You're like, but how did that person kind of know that this is what I've been thinking about? Or it's maybe one of my ideas. Well, let me just tell you something right now. I know for a fact that is an angel that God is sending your way in the shape of an opportunity or ingredient so that you can hear him more clearly. And let me tell you something, you only have about 50, 11 times to ignore those angels who come to give you those random messages of validation before God says, okay, you know what? I'm just going ahead and leave her alone because I done sent the mailman. I done sent the random uh, Karen, you know, I done sent the little boy. I done sent the old lady at the grocery store. <laughs> what else this girl wanna hear? I'm telling you, those are angels. I believe it with every single part of me because it's happened to me enough times to know this is not just a coincidence. God will purposefully send a message through someone just for it to reach you. And here you are still ignoring the opportunity because it didn't come from the dusty whose opinion you care so much about. Or it didn't come from your friend or your family or your mom or your cousin who you think is supposed to automatically give you that validation. Let me tell you something. Sometimes God needs to see you achieve and he needs you to hear the message from someone who has a completely untainted point of view. And sometimes that untainted point of view is going to be the clerk at the grocery store who doesn't know you, who just feels called to tell you something and you gotta hold on to it and you gotta take it because God just sent you an opportunity. So when someone random tells you, that's really great, like you should do that. I really think that'll work out. You're good at this. Yeah. That is an angel. That is an opportunity. 
That is the only validation that you need. Y'all, please don't forget about the man on the boat who ended up drowning because he kept waiting for God to show up. And God sent him three people to save him. But because it didn't look like God or didn't look, wasn't in the package that he expected it to be in, he said, nah, that's okay. Thanks anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm going to wait on God. Thanks. See you later. No, it wasn't no see you later. He died. We got 89 days left until January 1, 2024. Now is the time to pick up the phone. Now is the time to do all of it. Now is the time to jump 100% into the kitchen and utilize the ingredients that God has been giving you so you can make the cake that you desire for your life. Because God wants you to have what you are saying that you want. But you're confusing God and yourself every time you say you want it. And then he gives you a part of the ingredients to make it and you sleep on it. I want you guys to recognize something. Whether you know it or not, you are currently living at least one answered prayer. At least one. Where you are right now is a manifestation of a prayer you prayed either a year ago, five years ago, maybe even 10 years ago. You may not recognize it because we're always looking for more, but where you are, God has already showed up and showed out for you. You are currently living at least one answered prayer, which means that you have more opportunity available to you than you did two, three, four, five, six, seven years ago. You have more information available to you than you did two, three, four, five, six years ago. So you need to decide to commit to take what you have, which is what you once prayed for, and go and get what you are currently praying for right now. Because you currently have more than you did before, which means God is working in your favor. So now you need to take what you have that you didn't have before and work it, use it. Make the most of it, go forward with it. And this is in all areas, y'all. Y'all know I'm your business coach and I will always help you with your business, but I need you guys to expand here and realize the reason I'm so passionate about helping you all achieve success in your business is because when you can take an idea that exists in your mind, make it into a business that is successful, you are completely in alignment with what God has intended for you to do. God has given you the ability to take an idea that exists here, take it out of your mind and make it exist in your hand. This is why we must all have businesses because when you build and start a business, whether it's real estate or a product line, when you build and start something that is a representation of a goal or an idea you had in your mind, you are operating in the highest level that God has given you to operate in. Nobody can take you down when you have decided and committed to go after, relentlessly go after a goal, an idea, and an asphyxiation that you have for your life. Someone who has the drive and the resilience to say, I don't care what nobody says, I'm going to sell these lashes and I'm going to make $10,000 a month doing it. And then they go ahead and actually do it and achieve the goals that they have. Who, who gonna get in your way? Who is going to get in your way? Nobody. Not a, not a near person. Not a near person. 
So this carries over into your business. If you decide, you know what, I wanna make more than what I'm making right now. This job is cool, but I deserve more. And you decide to start doing the work. You decide to get in the kitchen. You decide to utilize the ingredients that you have to go and get the salary that you want or deserve. You are operating using the gifts that God has given you to take something in that powerful mind of yours and create it and hold it. Women, shout out to the men, but ladies, God has given us the power to create life within our womb. We, will, we can create an entire human over the course of 10 months. So if God has given us the ability to create an entire life form, you should know that God has also given you the ability to create the exact life that you want to live. If we can create life, then we can also create the life that we want. Do y'all understand that? And you know, that just like kind of took me right there because I remember when you know, I remember when after I gave birth to my twins and y'all know I was in a physically abusive marriage. And I remember my twins were like two months old. Yeah, two months old. And it was the, you know, it was the last fight that we ever had. That was the last time he put his hands on me. And, you know, I just remember being so furious and I looked down at my twins that I was nursing at the time. And I just, you know, I just thought about it. I said, I just delivered two human lives out of my womb. It came, they came out of me and now I'm nurturing them with the milk that is in my chest. There is no way I'm going to be sitting here dealing with this life when I just brought two lives into the world. And it was at that very moment that I decided I was done. That very moment. I will never forget that day. I will never forget that day and that moment because that was all it took. You know, we all reach a breaking point. I stayed in that abusive marriage for seven years. This is why I don't judge women that have dealt with abuse because I know what it is. You know, anyone in here will say, oh, I'll never let a man hit me. Well, love is crazy and complicated and abuse makes you another person. But there is going to be a moment where God says, wake up. Wake up. Pay attention to who you are. Pay attention to what you have done. All of those are your ingredients. If you're someone in here who's a mother, that itself is an ingredient because a mother who can bring life into the world and sustain a child, please, I need you to know that you also have that same core ability to make the life that you want. God has already given it to you. So when I look down at my twins, and I thought about the fact that this man just put his hands on me for the last time. I said, oh, no, no, no. That is done. I don't know what this future has to hold for me as a single mother with four kids, but this is the last time. Because I did not go through 12 hours of labor to bring these two human beings into the world at the same time. For someone to make me feel like the life I'm living, I'm not worthy to live it. And I really hope that message sits with someone. I really hope you recognize the power that you have. And I really hope that you recognize, despite what society is doing, people in your life are saying, right? We already know that the way in which this world is operating is not the way that God intended. There's so much happening that makes people feel small and makes them get down on themselves. But you can still 
achieve the life that you want and have the successful business and have the salary and have it all by tapping into the inner world that God has put in you. Forget about the outer world. Tap into the inner world that God has put in you and that is where you are going to find the path to get you what you need. Like I said, the cake is not going to be delivered to your doorstep. But what God will send you is all the ingredients you need to make it happen. You probably have most of them right now. So I want you to be open to opportunity. Sometimes opportunity also looks like you enrolling in a class. Sometimes opportunity also looks like you taking your last $300 and instead of putting it on brunch, put it on your mind, put it on your brain. Use it to invest, get some other information, get into a room. But because it doesn't look, right, we think that all the opportunity we need is supposed to come for free. When I started my business with that $1,200 stimulus check, do y'all know how hard that was? I was on EBT at the time, no job. I could have used that $1,200 stimulus check in a million other ways than to start a business on Instagram when I didn't even know if anyone was going to like me in the first place. But for me to use that whole $1,200 to kind of get on camera, try to create a little content and say, hey, Instagram, I'm Ellie, <laughs> what's up? When I could have used that $1,200 to buy stuff for my kids, buy stuff for myself, I could have saved it, right? Sometimes the opportunity is going to make you uncomfortable. But if you continue to stay comfortable, how are you going to grow? We're putting our money on things that make us comfortable instead of putting our money in places that actually cause us to grow, but we're not doing it because it's unfamiliar. Sometimes opportunity is gonna look like you turning off your phone for a week and being locked into a class. Shout out to all of you guys who are in my fully funded challenge. We're gonna be spending six days together only focusing on getting funding for your business. Sometimes opportunity looks like that. Sometimes opportunity looks like locking in, ignoring the distractions, getting zoned in, getting in a room with hundreds of other people who are also looking to go and achieve what you want to achieve and go in the same direction you want to go. Sometimes opportunity looks like that. We got 89 days left, y'all. 89. 89. I want y'all to comment ready in the chat if you're ready for opportunity. I want you to comment ready in the chat if you are ready for opportunity. I'm very glad that this message came through today. I really am because I did not expect to tell that story about, you know, my marriage. But I'm very glad that it came through because obviously I needed to share it because somebody in here needed to hear it. And if it really connected with you, feel free to DM me after this live. But I need you guys to understand that opportunity is calling you. We are in the last 89 days of this year. If there was any time to lock in, it's right now. I want you to go into 2024 already starting to utilize the ingredients that you have because you just don't know 2024 could be the year where that cake finally comes together. But every single time you delay an opportunity, every single time you ignore the call of opportunity, guess what? That final package gets delayed too. That final package gets delayed too. You know, I always like to think of it as, um, you know, an Amazon delivery, for example. Everything you're praying for, God has the package. It's on the way. We don't know the tracking number. We don't know when it's set to arrive. But the only thing that we can do to help speed up the delivery of that package is getting ready, taking care of our house and home, utilizing our ingredients, stewarding over what we have. If you are asking God to bring you a big package to your doorstep and there is no space in your home to accommodate the package, where is it going to go? 
So if you're wondering why you feel like your blessing is delayed, I need you to pay attention to how are you currently taking care of what you have? How are you currently stewarding your business? How are you currently stewarding your relationships? How are you currently stewarding your income? How are you currently taking care of your bills? How are you currently taking care of yourself? Are you speaking to yourself and believing in yourself in such a way where when God decides to drop off a big package of clients at your doorstep, can you also take care of your clients? Can you tell your clients to believe in themselves and your business if you're not telling yourself to believe in yourself and your business? God has a responsibility to all of his children. God has a responsibility to help you, but God also has a responsibility to help his other children. And what I mean by that is this, when you are praying for the partner, the, the client, the whatever it is to come into your life and help your situation, God has a responsibility to also make sure that the person you are praying for, that you are going to be a blessing to them. It's not just about God bringing you the blessing, but are you also going to be a blessing to the person you are asking to come into your life? You want God to help you bring this idea to fruition, but are you also showing God that you are the person that is going to take care of this idea and take care of this business so it can sustain and last and change more people's lives? Are y'all picking up what I'm putting down? You want the man, sis. You want the man. Fellas, y'all want the lady. Y'all want the one who's sweet, you know, all the things. Y'all want the man who got the body. He's loyal. He's responsible. But God is like, well, wait a minute. I love him too. So I can't send him to you if you're not going to be a blessing to him. You don't have to get ready. You, I got to keep y'all separated from a little while. I believe the only reason I met my husband in the season that I did is because I spent a year in therapy and I got myself together. My husband has qualities and traits I still don't have. I have never met a person like him. But God only brought him to me when I could be a blessing to him the way he is a blessing to me. Because how would it make sense if God gives you what you're asking for and then you end up being a nightmare to that person? Or God gives you the success that you're looking for for your idea, but didn't you end up being the one who lets the idea crumble? Are y'all picking up what I'm putting down? I'm just saying. Are y'all picking up what I'm putting down? <laughs> okay. So when I'm asking God for more in my business, I started adjusting my prayers. I started saying, well, wait a minute. Okay, wait. Mm -hmm. Before I'm asking you for more, God, I want you to give me the discipline I need to take better care of what I have right now. I want you to give me the knowledge and the ability to steward over what I have right now. I want you to give me the I want you to give me the openness of my in my heart to serve the audience I have now before you give me a bigger audience. I know it's coming, but I want to be ready. I want you to give me the discipline to show up and be consistent for the 537,000 people that I have in my community now before you get me to a million. So we just got to adjust our prayer a little bit. And we got to be paying attention to the ingredients and the opportunity that we have, y'all. I cannot wait. This is a transformative month. 
I am very excited about this October. I'm very excited for my challenge. And I can't let y'all leave here this live without me telling you about the challenge, okay? Because like I said, for some of you, opportunity is going to look like you locking in for five or six days with me and the other people in this fully funded challenge to really get the results that you're looking for and that you've been looking for all year. We are going to be spending six days getting your business funded. And I'm going to show you exactly what our class itinerary looks like. So you know what's going on. I'm going to pause the comments for a second so you can see. The fully funded challenge, y'all. We are officially 20 days away. We're starting out VIP day, personal credit and your profit strategy. As much as your business is going to grow, you need to understand how you are going to operate your cash flow and gain profit. Business credit and 50K lenders on day one. Business loans and business plans. This is going to be the best business plan class you have ever taken. And, and that's just a fact. I already know because I love what I do and it's going to be a great class. You're going to understand how to get loans using your business plans without your PG. Day three, we're doing pitching to investors, how to create your pitch decks and pitch properly. Day four, grants and government contracts. Okay, so you're going to be getting grant money and understanding the basics of government contracts and how to win. And then lastly, how you are going to leverage business funding to get passive income. Because this next season of your life, let me just make sure y'all understand, this next season of your life, looks like you making money in your sleep. With the way inflation is happening, with the way that this country is moving, it is time for you to set up multiple income streams. I know that that's something we hear all the time online, but in this class, I really wanna give you all the tools to make it happen. I don't just want it to be a buzzword. We see passive income as a big buzzword on social media, no. I want y'all to be about that action and getting results. I need you to be ready to commit six days to getting results. I want you to comment the word results in the chat because I could have just went and created a class on getting funding. I could have just done anything else, but I knew I had to serve in a different way this season and do a full live six days helping you all to secure funding. And that's exactly what it's gonna do. And here's the thing, y'all. You know, because I asked you guys this yesterday, you know that if you could invest $5,000 to get $50,000 back, you would do it. Yes or yes, it would be a great investment. If you could put in $3,000 to get $50,000 back, you would do it. You would be like, this is amazing. This is a great opportunity. If you could put $2,000 in and get $50,000 back, you could do it. And you would do it because you would know it's a great opportunity. I need you guys to jump fast and recognize that this challenge is only $397. For you to go in and get the information you need to secure six figures in funding over and over and over and over again. So whether you're in a season and time where $397 is comfortable or uncomfortable for you, the cost of this challenge really is not $397. The cost of it is if you do not go, you are missing out on hundreds of thousands of dollars in funding that you won't be able to get because you don't have the opportunity and you didn't get the information that you needed to be able to go into 2024 with the funding required. That is the real cost. And that's the cost every time we ignore an opportunity. It isn't how much it is up front. Oftentimes, the cost of an opportunity is how much we lose because we didn't take it. I want you to think about the last time somebody validated your idea, that angel we talked about. When you didn't take the step to do what that angel said you're good at, Eight months ago or two years ago, think about all of the income that you lost between then and now simply because you didn't recognize that as an opportunity and start. Don't let this be the same thing over and over again. Don't let this also be a moment where you miss out on an opportunity or you ignore an opportunity and then you find yourself six months later realizing I'm still in the same place. 
My business still hasn't gotten funded. I don't have a business plan. I haven't applied to grants. I don't know how to pitch to an investor. My personal credit is the same. I have no idea how to get profit in my business. I don't have any passive income. Let's not do it. I just want to know something. Can I give y'all the same amount of game in this challenge that I give to my uh, $25,000 clients and my $10,000 clients? Can I give y'all the same level of game for $397? Comment yes or yes in the chat. Can I give y'all the same level of game and the same level of attention and the same level of commitment that I give to my clients that pay me $10,000 or $25,000 or $2,000 for an hour? Can I give y'all that? Because that's what I'm prepared to do. All the way here in Senegal, West Africa, okay? <laughs> so I'm really urgently telling you all to secure your seat to the challenge because we have 20 days left. There are 63 seats left. 63 seats. And there's 20 days. And there's a lot of y'all on here. So I want to make sure that you all secure your seat, okay? I want to make sure that you are in the challenge. I want to make sure that you are in a position to take advantage of the opportunity that is here now. I'm going to show you guys where to go right now because I feel like somebody needs to go ahead and secure their seat now. I do. I just do. So when you're on my page, you're going to click on the link in my bio. You're going to click grow your biz and get funding now. And then boom, you are going to click on the first link. Join the five-day fully funded challenge. 500K worth of funding strategies in five days. Are you tired of using your own money in your business? Comment the word tired if you are tired. Comment tired if you're tired. So boom, you are going to join as a VIP. You'll see all the days that you have here. This is what we're covering in class starting on October 22nd. Boom. And you are going to join as a VIP. Now, as a VIP, you get private Q&A, all of these bonuses, replay access, and et cetera. And you're going to secure your seat. Now, when you secure your seat, you're going to get a receipt, and that's going to make it a tax write-off. All right? So I just want you to know that so you keep your receipt so you'll be ready to go. But I'm very excited to see you guys in the challenge. It looks like... Jay, Jay Sean just got his seat. Michael just got his seat. So I definitely want you guys to secure your seats. We do have now 63 seats left. So make sure that you are getting yourself locked in. This is your season of opportunity. This is your season of opportunity. Whatever opportunities show up at your door between now and the end of this month, answer the call. Even if it doesn't look the way you expect, even if it's a little bit hard, even if it makes you uncomfortable, even if it pushes you beyond your comfort zone, answer the call because you do not know what is on the other side until you go and jump in. For a lot of you, that one of those opportunities is going to be this challenge. It's going to be you locking in for six days every day to only work on getting your business funded. I'm here with open arms to welcome you to take advantage of this opportunity. A lot of you are going to have more opportunities that come, but let's make sure that you get into a habit these next 89 days. Start saying yes to more things instead of saying no. Start believing in yourself and your capabilities instead of deciding that you're not good enough. Start being open to what God has already given you instead of feeling like you are not enough. Don't let these dusties determine your, dis your destiny. Just because they said you couldn't, doesn't matter. Pay attention to what you know you want to do and what you know you want to achieve and go find the opportunities and the classes and the people and the social media pages and whatever that align with where you want to go and what you want to do and commit to making the sacrifice, even if it's uncomfortable, to show up and show out every day for yourself. Because this challenge really isn't for me, it's for you. I've done all this already, but this is a season where I want to make sure that you get six days of high quality education to access this information. So y'all go ahead and secure your seats. 
Now, the price of this challenge goes up on Friday, so if you are someone that's working on it right now, after this live, go to my page and secure your seat or just DM me the word challenge. Let me know you were in the live and me and my team will help you secure your seat. All right. I love y'all. I hope you guys enjoyed this More Money Monday. If this really resonated with you, let me know. And again, DM me the word challenge so my team and I can help you secure your seat before the price goes up on Friday. Love y'all.